what I have here is a piece of beech. It's from a limb that fell out of the tree. Uh, it wasn't completely dead. I don't know why it fell out. Um, you can see part of it's been ripped. I guess there was another limb up here that got caught because it was a tree that fell, so it might have caught it and broke it. Um, I like carving with beech. It's very good wood. And when it dries out, it doesn't really split um, as bad as, say, oak or others. But when you're making a, a needle, unless you make one out of good hard wood that'll last you, most of the time when you're done making your needle, you throw it away anyway. Um, at least I do. Or I put it on a shelf and uh, let one of the kids have it. Um, but most of the time they carve their own needle. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out. This is probably a good uh, two inch thick piece. So we're going to split this down. It's already halfway split. I'm going to go ahead and split on both sides and get my piece out of the center. And you want less knots as possible. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use my bushcrafting machete. I don't know if all of you have seen this. This is one I had done up uh, by Blind Horse Knives. Uh, I sent an old, I sent a, a, a machete, bushcrafting style machete. It's uh, pretty thick. It's like quarter inch thick, maybe. Um, squared the spine up, changed handle on it. Um, put a convex edge down it. But anyway, this isn't a, a knife video. This is a how to make a netting needle video. So I'm going to go ahead and split this and I'll show you what this looks like here in a minute. Alright, as you can see, I've got that split down. Pretty good. I just took a piece off both sides. Now go ahead and finish shaving it down some. Now you want to keep in mind that when you're making your needle, you want to carve the center spike out by hand first before you thin it out too bad. You want to carve this part here out first. If you get it too thin while you're trying to carve it, it will split and crack, especially with a dry piece. So what I wanted to do is thin this out. It can be a little curved. Don't have to be perfectly straight. But try to get it to the best shape you can. Now that I've somewhat got a, a piece done here, it's not it's not too thin, just about right. It's not a very big needle. You don't need a real wide needle because I'm going to do about a two inch. Mesh, that's what I determined I'm going to make. Now I will point this a little bit. pointed there. Now next thing you want to do is if you have a Leatherman with an awl or what I like to use is my Swiss Army Victor Knox. Victor Knox has an awl on it. I'm going to go ahead and drill my holes. You want to drill three of them. Right in the center. Remember, you want this thick because when you start driving this all through here, it will break on you and split if this wood is not, uh, if it's too hard and you try to force your all through there, it will split your wood. When you get a twist, it will split it straight up the center here. And depending on your needle size, 
what I like to do is draw a line straight down the center where I know that that's where my needle is going to be. And right where I put that line, I'm going to go on either side of it and drill another hole. side right, you can see I got three holes right here's where it's gonna be my needle I've got one two three make sure they're not too close together you can thin this out later on so now I'm going to take my saw if you have a leatherman or a Gerber something with a small saw on it will work but you can do it with a knife as well by slowly carving out a groove and getting it through but I'm gonna go ahead and use my saw Sometimes it's a little difficult to get it started. Once you do, this is a fairly green piece of wood. What I want to do is, is not cut yourself like I just did. See that there? Going down like that, I pulled out and hit it, and I scratched myself there. Not a big deal, it's a small one. Gotta look out for that. If you have a glove or something you can wear, because you're sawing. Because if you get going, you got your hand too close to it. I like guess here, and you come out and go back down, and you'll hit your hand. And I believe a saw scrape is a lot worse than a knife cut to me because it hurts more because you didn't cut yourself, you ripped yourself open which to me is a lot worse with me pushing on my hand. Not a big deal. Okay, as you can see, I've cut to the outside of that hole. Not too close to the inside, but to the outside of that hole. If you cut too close to here, you'll make this too thin. You'll clean this out later. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill, cut from this side, from this side of the hole down to this hole here to the outside. All right, as you can see, I made my saw mark from here to here and from here to here. Now what we'll do is I'll go ahead and thin this out with my knife and we'll worry about shaving this at the end. All right, now that you've got, I've got some of it carved out, you can actually thin it out. This thing's pretty thick and it's hard to get in there and carve this out with this so thick. So what you can do is very carefully like thin this out so it's to almost the thickness that you want it you don't want to get to too thin at first because you're going to be carving get it somewhat thinned out to where it's more easy to carve all right she's starting to come into shape I'm going to go ahead and shave this down some more once I get it down to where I, I, I like it I'll get right back with you Okay, now that I've thinned it out some, a lot thinner than what it was. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and finish carving my needle. Now this is where you must be careful when you start getting down here to the bottom part. You start putting your knife in there and twisting like this. And this bottom part here, you end up snapping your needle off. Or your spike, I call it a spike. It's easier for the kids to remember. But normally, when you drill your hole in there, you'll have the round part of your hole. Since I made it a little too short and I wanted to make my needle longer, I just saw down. Normally, you drill a hole and it would already be round. You wouldn't have to make that round. Because you don't want too many sharp edges on this. You don't want it to cut your cordage. Especially if you've made your cordage. It'll be very time consuming to make your cordage, but it can be done. I prefer, I don't know if I stated in the previous video, I prefer to use spun polyester. 
um, for making my nets. It's very flexible, it will not rot. Oh, and I did forget to mention a few other things. When you're going to use natural fibers such as jute twine or hemp, um, anything that's made with natural materials, you do need to dry it out. If it gets wet, it will have a tendency to rot if you're not careful. If you let it stay wet and you pack it up, it will rot. That's why you're better off to use mason line. It's really cheap. It's a little more weird to work with because you're, uh, it has a tendency to spin up and make a, loop, a lot of loops in it and you constantly have to spin your needle to get the twist out of it but it's not that big of a deal you need to do that with pretty much any cordage unless you wrap your needle the proper way there is a proper way to wrap your needle and I will show you how to do that as soon as I get my needle done so I'm going to go ahead and finish carving this needle out and once I get this part done, I'll get back with you. You can see it's starting to come along. I'll go ahead and finish it up. And then I'll be right back with you. All right, I've pretty much got my needle somewhat. You can actually make this longer. So you get a lot more cordage on there. But this is basically the beginnings of your needle. Now what you're going to have to do is put your groove down here I'll go ahead and use my saw again and I will go ahead and uh, show you how to do that you don't actually have to have a saw you can use your your knife by could by doing a little bit on this side flipping it over just doing a little bit of carving on this side and keep going back and forth basically just carving a V in it you don't have to have anything square or round or U-shaped. Getting into some heartwood there. And then you have to be careful when you do this because you will split it. If it does, it's an easy fix. Just take a little bit of cordage. Cut a couple grooves on the sides and then lash it back together. Because there's nothing worse than getting to the very end, making one cut and splitting your needle down the middle. It's actually heartbreaking. So basically you just do something like that. I'm going to make it a little nicer, but you need your groove. As you can see, here's a factory needle pretty long I mean I'm basically about the same size as I might make it a little smaller as you can see my needles a little bit longer hold them side by side there you can make your needle a little longer maybe and you can see this grooves pretty far down which you will have to take down further um, depending on how much cordage you want to hold on here So I'll go ahead and finish doing some more of this, carving this out, then I'll be right back with you. Okay, this is my needle. I've got the rough shape out. I've got it as thin as I want it. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I want to take all these sharp edges off. He's 90 degrees. So instead of car doing it and shaving, I'm just going to take my knife and scrape down the edges just to smooth them off a little bit. You want to make sure this is fairly smooth. You don't want anything catching as you're going through your needle so you want this fairly smooth use a rock whatever you have you just want to make sure that your needle is fairly smooth sometimes you run into it, it being fuzzy just run your knife over it go ahead and sometimes you'll you'll be scraping and you'll get these little fuzzies all over it depending on what kind of wood you're using so I just take my knife and go over it a little bit. Like I said, you don't want any sharp edges or anything that's going to catch your cordage as you're going through. I'm not so much worried about inside here. It's more like the edges that's going to go through your mesh. So I'll go ahead and finish smoothing this up. And then I will 
get back with you and show you the finished product. Okay, there's my finished needle. Eh, it took about a half hour to do. Wasn't too bad. But now what I want to do is show you how to make a different style needle. You don't have to make one that complicated. I have this leftover piece that I cut off the other one. I want to show you how to make a different style needle. So I'll move the camera down here and show you how to make this one. First you want to get a fairly thin piece just like you did before. Shade the sides a little bit. Shade the bark off. You can do this with a regular knife. You don't have to use a big old tool like I'm using. I just happen to bring this instead of my axe. A lot now. I don't bring my axe out here unless it's snow on the ground, dead winter, and I gotta process a lot of firewood. I just gotta process a little bit. It's not too cold. I'll just bring this with me. This works great. Okay, now as you can see, it's fairly thin, not too bad, about half inch thick, and probably an inch, inch wide. Now what I want to do is, I'm going to go ahead and cut a notch in the top part, and a notch down here. So as soon as I do that, I'll get back with you. Try not to cut myself again this time. Take your time, no need to rush. Flip it over here.
All right, so as you can see, let me move the camera here. All right, as you can see, I've got a notch on this end, notch on this end. I'm going to take my knife and dress that up. I'm going to go ahead and shave it down a little thinner because it's easier to work with instead of trying to carve a fat piece of wood. I want to be able to carve a small piece of wood, but remember, don't make it too thin or it'll break while you're trying to carve it. I've got that a little bit thinner. I'm going to carve my notches out more. A little bit thinner. I'm going to carve my notches out and I'll get back with you. For those of you who think I'm cutting myself, I'm going to cut myself. I hold everything still and when I come in, I use my wrist here. And it hits my belly, so I'm not going like this and trying to hurt myself. When I come in, I pretty much can only go so far. It's like using a draw knife. Your shoulders only go back so far, and that knife won't hit your belly. Same with this. So it looks like I might cut myself, but I keep I don't move my wrist. I just move my whole arm back. When I hit, I can only go so far. So as you can see. Needs to be thinned out a little more. As you can see I've got a notch on this end and a notch on this end. It's a little easier to carve. If you take and drill two holes, like I did in the previous, drill one here and one down here a little lower, and cut down to it. It's a little easier to carve that because you get in there too tight and spin. It'll actually split this completely down the center. Or you'll, sp you'll split it here and then it'll actually split this off this ear off okay now I finished this one out I call this the dog bone needle because um, it's fat here or a wrench needle it looks like a an open-end uh, craftsman wrench or an open-end wrench um, it's skinny down through the center it needs to be a little skinnier um, there's some more final touches I need to make to this but if you make one of these you'll understand um, um, the concept and see this one's got a split in it I wasn't real careful and I've lost part of my my needle but that's all right I had a split in it when I began with it this was just showing you another style you could make you could just like I said get a round stick anything really flat cut it off here put a notch in it cut it off here put another notch in it and make it flat and you've got yourself a needle you don't have to carve anything fancy like this. You know, there's a little more time consuming, but this one does So those are basically job. the two types of needles that you can make while you're out in the field to start making nets. In the next set of videos or the next series of videos that I'm going to produce, uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, put up your head rope uh, and start your net using a head rope. Um, using the uh, loose attachment method or using the method where you permanently attach to your head rope. I'm going to show you how to use a grommet or a key ring or a split ring uh, to start making either a round net or a purse net. Um, round net would also be uh, used as a landing net or a dip net or a um, crab net, depending on where you're from and what you're using it for. Also with the long net, that can also be considered a, a uh, gill net. Um, I'm also going to show you how to increase and de decrease your meshes depending on if you're going to make a uh, cone shaped net, uh, if you're going to make a, uh, a bag net to carry stuff in. I'm also going to show you how to make a, uh, how to do the body of the net and how to um, attach more cordage uh, to your net when you run out using uh, two or three different style of knots depending on what you want to use and what type of cordage you're using. I'm also going to show you how to calculate 
uh, how much cordage you need for the type of net you're going to make. Uh, I'm going to show you how to calculate um, how many meshes you how many meshes you'll need to use um, when you're making your net. Um, so you don't have to guess at how many meshes you'll need for uh, the type of net you're going to need. Um, I'm also going to show you the difference um, between a fully stretched mesh and a um, I'm trying to think of the technical term um, because it will be different lengths depending on if it's a stretch net or if it's a, a loose net. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to make uh, a turtle net, uh, how to make a cone net, um, how to make a bag net, um, and all the different styles of nets. So this series of videos will go on for a while. Um, I will got, try to get them out there as quick as possible. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this uh, I won't say short introduction, this long introduction um, into the different types of uh, equipment, uh, materials you can use, and uh, how you how to make uh, your needles. So this has been Alan with the National Pathfinder Youth Organization. I hope you stay tuned for the next set of videos, and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you and God bless.